which was the first largest phylum under animal kingdom it is arthropoda that is the insects right so this forms the second largest phylum segmentation is found only in annelids and in arthropods wherein arthropods just have segments in their body but annelids they exhibit metamerism which is a form of segmentation annelids have muscular food but do they facilitate in feeding no for example snail they have muscular food which helps them in locomotion everyone a warm welcome to the session on first pc biology i'm dr divya biology faculty with yashwant pune university college temple of excellence mysore so in the session let us study the topic phylum mollusca under chapter 4 that is animal kingdom so let's learn the characteristics of phylum mollusca and then learn some of the mcqs that can be framed under this particular topic for exam point of view so phylum mollusca so these are the second largest phylum under animal kingdom and which was the first largest phylum under animal kingdom it is arthropoda that is the insects right so this forms the second largest phylum and they can be terrestrial in habitat or aquatic hab in habitat wherein wherein they can be marine that is living in seas or oceans or they can also live in fresh water such as ponds ri rivers lakes etc so for example marine meaning like we have the sea hare so this is sea hare which is a mollusk so this can be found in marine environments and in fresh water sometimes the fresh water pearls that are there or oysters so they are found in fresh waters marine octopus is also an example for marine and uh, what level of organization they have they have organ system level of organization wherein a group of organs come together to perform a particular function and their cell arrangement is triploblastic wherein the outer layer of cells forms the ectoderm the inner layer forms the endoderm and between the ectoderm and the endoderm there is one more layer of cells that is there or embryonic layer of cell that is there which is called as the mesoderm so therefore it is triploblastic cell arrangement and do they have a body cavity yes they have a body cavity therefore they are coelomates wherein coelo meaning body cavity next talking about the structure they are bilaterally symmetrical that is if i draw a line exactly at the center one half of the organism will look exactly similar to the other half or it will be a mirror image of the other half so therefore it is bilaterally symmetrical next is shell it is calcareous so calcareous means they are made up of calcium carbonate that is caco3 calcium carbonate so we all know that the shells of these organism that is the oysters and all that they are very very hard right what is it made up of it is made up of calcium carbonate next do they have segments no they are unsegmented segmentation is found only in annelids and in arthropods wherein arthropods just have segments in their body but annelids they exhibit metamerism which is a form of segmentation and uh, talking about their uh, body they have a head so this is the head part they have the head and they have a muscular foot so this is the muscular foot so these are the muscular foot which helps them to move and they have a visceral hump this visceral hump is one of the characteristic feature of mollusk so this is the visceral hump here tortoise also has a visceral hump so this is one of the most important peculiar features of these particular organism which you don't get to find in other organisms and what is their shell made up of so here uh, this this is snail so if you can see the snail what is its shell made of its shell is made up of calcium carbonate next i told you about the visceral hump right so between the visceral hump and the mantle is called the mantle cavity so if you can see here this is the visceral hump that is there so or the shell which forms the visceral hump 
So in between, if you see your oyster or if you see the shell of the tortoise or if you see the, uh, that is uh, the octopus, all has have a visceral hump. So between the visceral hump or the shell or between the mantle, if you can see, there is one cavity that is there or a small gap that is there, which is called as the mantle cavity. So here this part, you can see the mantle cavity. And in the mantle cavity, they have these respiratory organs that are there, which are nothing but the gills. So they respire through gills. So there is a mantle cavity that is between the visceral hump and the mantle. You, after the mantle, you can find a mantle cavity. So the space between the hump and the mantle is called as a mantle cavity. And in that, what is there? Feather-like gills are present. And these feather-like gills help them to this portion. Can you see it is feather-like? So it helps them to respire. And they have respiratory and excretory function. So these gills, not just they help in the process of respiration, but they also help in the process of excretion or eliminating waste from the body. And the anterior head region has sensory tentacles. So if you see the octopus can you see the anterior part anterior means the below part that is the anterior part has tentacles and these tentacles are used by these organisms to capture prey so they have tentacles and that is sensory tentacles which are capable of detecting an organism nearby and then capturing them and the mouth contains a file like rasping organ which is called as radula so they have in the mouth portion that is there so this portion they have a rasping organ so this part rasping organ which is called as the radula and what is the function of the radula to grab on to food say so to take in food or to ingest food to or to grab on to food these radula will help so this is one of the important point which can come for the mcq next talking about reproduction here also they are dioecious meaning Male is separate and female is separate. And they are oviparous, that is, they lay the egg. So, they are oviparous and development is indirect wherein they have a larval stage in between and then that larva develops into an adult. So, that is indirect development. Next, talking about some of the examples. So, we have Pila, which is also called as the apple snail. So, this is Pila. Then there is pink tada, that is pearl oyster. So this is pink tada, which is also called as pearl oyster. So you can see the formation of pearls here, right, on both sides. So pearls can be freshwater and marine pearls are also there. So next we have sepia, which is cuttlefish. So we have sepia, then comes loligo, which is squid, loligo. Then we have octopus, that is devil fish. Octopus in the previous images only we have seen that. Then Eplysia, that is sea hare. Sea hare in the first slide I have shown you sea hare. Then there is a dentalium, which is tusk shell. So this is dentalium. Dentalium. So can you see dentalium? That is, uh, it looks almost like the tusk of an elephant, right? So that is why it is called as tusk shell. And there is one more chiton, that is ketopleura. So, this is chiton. Chiton, that is cletopleura. So, this don't get confused with this as segmentation. It is not segments. It is just their exoskeleton that is being arranged on them and nothing else. It's not segments on their body. So, chiton. So, these are some of the examples. There are vast varieties of mollusks. These are few of the examples that are given. So next, let's learn some of the MCQs. So the first one, dash is the second largest phylum in animal kingdom. Is it Annelida? Is it Arthropoda, Mollusca or Porifera? It is Mollusca. It's not Arthropoda because Arthropoda is the first. It is the first largest phylum under animal kingdom. So the answer here is Mollusca. Next, Molluscans exhibit dash level of organization. So they exhibit organ system level of organization wherein a group of organ come together to perform a particular function. The shell of molluscans are made of, is it silica? No, silica deposition is usually seen in diatoms which comes under kingdom plantae. So here is it calcium carbonate, is it cellulose or chitin? Cellulose again it is uh, seen in plants, chitin it forms the exoskeleton in the case of arthropods. 
So therefore, the option here is calcium carbonate because they have a calcareous shell which is made of calcium carbonate. The soft spongy layer of skin on the visceral hump in mollusks is called is it radula, tentacles, mantle or metamers? Radula is the mouth part. In the mouth, they have some rasping organs called as radula which helps them in feeding. So that is not the option here. Tentacles, it's not tentacles because tentacles are those long uh, arm like structures that they have for capturing prey especially in octopuses so that's not the right answer is it metamers no because metamers are the segmentation seen in annelids so that's also not the right answer it is mantle so the uh, visceral hump is always covered by a soft tissue and that tissue is called as mantle it is called mantle its respiratory organ in mollusks are is it book gills lungs book lungs or feathery gills so is it book gills? No, it's not book gills because book gills, lungs, book lungs, all that are pe present in the case of arthropods. It is feathery gills. So feathery gills are the right answer here. Feathery gills not just helps these organisms for respiration, but they also help the organisms in the process of excretion as well. So feathery gills is the right answer. Next, dash is a characteristic feature of mollusca. Is it parapodia? Is it tentacles? Is it jointed appendages? Or is it comb plates? So, parapodia, no, because parapodia is the appendages that are found in annelids. That is an aquatic annelid, nearies. Tentacles, tentacles, yeah, it is a characteristic feature. Jointed appendages, no, because jointed appendages are found in arthropods, that is insects. Is it comb plates? No. Because comb plates are found in tenophores. So tenophores have eight rows of comb plates, right? That is the comb jellies that we call. So it's not uh, teno, not comb plates as well. So the right answer here is tentacles. So tentacles is a characteristic feature of mollusca. So now, why tentacles? Because mollusca means don't think that it is only the organisms which have shell like the snail or uh, the oysters and all that. Other organisms also come like... Octopus, they have tentacles, right? So, uh, tentacles is the right answer here. Next, mollusks have dash that facilitate feeding. Do they have muscular food? Mollusks have muscular food, but do they facilitate in feeding? No, for example, snail, they have muscular food, which helps them in locomotion, not in feeding. Tentacles or a visceral hump or radula. Tentacles don't facilitate feeding. Tentacles help in the capturing of prey but they don't help in feeding or taking in a food. So that is not the right answer. Visceral hump, they do have a visceral hump, but visceral hump is just a small hump that is the mantle region wherein it is. it looks like a hump. So that is the visceral hump. It has nothing to do with the feeding. Is it radula? Yes, radula because it is a, a small rasping organ that is present in the mouth region of these mollusk which actually help in taking in food or in the process of feeding. So the right option here is D, it is radula. Next, pintada are commonly called as squid, pearl oyster, cuttlefish or apple snail. So squid, no squid is commonly called as, squid is loligo. Is it apple snail? No, apple snail is called as pila. So the right answer here is pearl oyster because pintada is commonly called as pearl oyster. Next, devil fish is the name given to. This is one of the questions that is important. Devil fish is the name given to cuttlefish, sea hare, octopus or squid. It is the name given to octopus. So, octopus is also called as devil fish. Next, dash is not a characteristic feature of mollusk. Again, here, I have asked not a characteristic feature. Segmentation, bilateral symmetry, they do exhibit bilateral symmetry. They are tri triploblastic in nature and they have a body cavity. So all the three, that is B, C and D are the characteristic feature of mollusk, which is not segmentation because they don't have segments on their body. Segments are restricted to arthropods and annelids. That too, annelids, metamerism. It is metamerism. So therefore here, segmentation is the right answer. So this was about the session. So, wherein we learned the general characteristics and also got to know some of the MCQs that can be framed under this particular topic. So, I hope you understood this session well. We shall meet again in the coming session wherein we will discuss about a new topic and learn the MCQs under that particular 
topic. So, see you in the next session. Thank you.